Se împlinesc 22 de ani de la atentatele de la 11 septembrie 2001. Atunci întregul mapamond era cu ochii pe acele evenimente care au schimbat istoria Statelor Unite și a întregii omeniri. Iar acum, direct din New Jersey, se alătură intervenției noastre William Jimeno, unul dintre supraviețuitorii atentatelor de la 11 septembrie. Thank you, William, for accepting this dialog. Thank you for having me. So, uh, William, you were a junior police officer assigned to the Port Authority bus terminal, right? When you saw the shadow of the first plane seconds before it hits the North Tower of the World Trade Center, how it was? Yes, I was a rookie police officer. I only had nine months on the job. Uh, I was working on 42nd and 8th Avenue when the plane came over Midtown Manhattan, and one of my sergeants actually saw it. I saw the shadow. Uh, soon after that, we realized that we were under attack, and 20 of us responded from the bus terminal in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, we're Port Authority police officers of both states, New York and New Jersey. Uh, we responded down there. At that point, Sergeant McLaughlin got the team of us together, and we went in to try to save lives. For how many hours you were trapped there? Once we went into the building, five of us went in, uh, myself, Sergeant McLaughlin, Antonio Rodriguez, Dominic Pizzullo, and Christopher Amoroso. Unfortunately, when the first tower fell, we lost uh, Christopher Amoroso and Antonio Rodriguez. And then when the second tower fell, we lost Dominic Pizzullo, who was trying to extract me out. Um, and then it, that started a fight for my life. I was buried a total of 13 hours, and then my sergeant was buried 22 hours. We're the only two people to survive from underneath the World Trade Center, which is a miracle and just a testament to the human spirit. So uh, if you're listening to me, understand that no matter what you're going through in your life, you can also overcome uh, the worst challenges in your life. Uh, I'm no different than anyone in this world. And that's what I want to be as inspiration to other people to know that when you're faced with challenges, you can also overcome things as well. So, um, as you said uh, before, uh, you were buried there in the basement between uh, of the two towers. Can you describe us the whole situation? Uh, it was it was horrific. We were between Tower 1 and Tower 2, and there's a concourse level, a mall level that connects the towers. That's how you would get to each tower. And unfortunately, we were leaving Tower 2, heading back to Tower 1, when it collapsed. Uh, the only thing I remember is hearing a humongous boom. I mean, it sounded like, uh, it's just an, a huge explosion. I can't even describe. And then I saw into the vestibule, the lobby of two, a huge fireball the size of my house. And what it was, was the building was coming down and Sergeant McLaughlin actually saw the wall of debris coming toward us. Uh, and that's when his expertise kicked in and we happened to be next to a, a doorway that led to a freight elevator. And he said, run run there because he figured if he can get our team around the freight elevator, the beams might deflect the explosion and, uh, you know, save some of us. He didn't know the building was coming down. We never knew the buildings were coming down. Uh, it was very horrible, something I hope and I wish that nobody in the world will ever have to go through again. I also read uh, your story and uh, I saw that you asked uh, the surgeon uh, to send the radio message to your wife. And um, your wife was then uh, pregnant in uh, seven months, if I am uh, not wrong. So tell me, what were your feelings in that moment? Well, at that moment, I realized that we had lost three teammates. Uh, I was severely injured. My sergeant was severely injured. And it didn't look like anybody was going to come save us. So at that point, I'm, I'm Catholic. I don't preach religion, but I'm Catholic. And at that point, I made my peace with God. I had asked my sergeant to put over the radio to let my wife know that I loved her. And yes, my wife, Allison, was seven months pregnant. I just said, you know, let her name the baby, which uh, we were still trying to figure out the name of the baby. Uh, but she liked Olivia. And I said, please let her know that I want her to name the baby Olivia. The joke is I always say women always win no matter what. But I wanted my wife to be happy. And as a man, I just wanted her to have peace knowing that I loved her. I wanted the baby to be named after what she wanted. And my only thought at that point was to let God know to somehow let me see my baby be born. And the other thing was that, uh, you know, I knew everybody was going to heaven that day because these cowards, these terrorists attacked innocent human beings. And I felt that everybody that day was going to go to heaven. And I was okay with dying at that point because um, I, I'm an immigrant. I came to this country at two years old, but I love this country as everyone should love their own countries, but I love America. And I felt if I died today, I died as an American, as a police officer, as a father, trying to do the right thing and help other human beings. Uh, how was your life after 9-11? 
You know, uh, it was difficult. I had to deal with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Uh, but I fought back because of the love of my family uh, and the support of my family. I've written two books. Uh, you see them behind me, uh, Sunrise Through the Darkness, that goes really into what happened. But then the aftermath, how I was able to recover from uh, PTSD. And I wrote a children's book, uh, Immigrant American Survivor, for children from around the world to understand that no matter where you come from, what color skin you are, what ethnicity, what religion, you can attain your dreams because we're all human beings. We're all part of the same family, whether people like it or not. And at the end of the day on 9-11, what that showed was that they attacked America, but what they did is attack the world because we always come to each other's aids, no matter where we're from, uh, no matter what part of the world we're from, we're all human beings. We cry the same, we feel the same. Uh, and we want to grow up and see our families grow and be able to walk our children down the aisle and watch them get married. And that's something that I think in, in, at the heart, uh, everybody throughout the world wants for their families. So uh, for me, it was, I hope to be an example of someone who's gone through a terrible tragedy, has able to recover, able to be happy, have a great family. And that's what I would like for everybody in the world. Uh, maybe after 22 years, after 9-11, uh, you will find out my uh, question uh, irrelevant, but have you ever tried to figure out what really happened there? You know what? I leave that for other people. Uh, I know what happened because we're the only two people to survive from inside the buildings. You know, there's all this conspiracy stuff. I can tell you that the structure failed. Uh, and the building came down and it fell the way it was designed because I've talked to engineers who uh, actually built the buildings, architects, very older people who broke their heart to see those buildings come down. Uh, what I can tell you is what caused September 11th is just evil. And I tell people there's evil and there's good in this world. Uh, I use the quote by Edmund Burke, all that is needed for the triumph of evil is for good men to stand by and do nothing. And I tell everybody, there's always good men and women today and will be always to defeat evil. Uh, so what caused 9-11 was evil, bad people. And we have them and we have to teach our children that there's going to be bad in this world, but there's more good. At the end of the day, I always say if they were to show all the good news in this world, probably your business would be out of business because people won't tune in. But there's a lot of good in this world. And that's what I want people to remember 22 years later. Uh, William, in the end, um, what's your message for the whole world? Because now you are uh, an example for each of us. Well, I use three words that my mom and my father taught me to have faith. If faith in religion, if you don't have faith in religion, have faith in yourself, have hope. Always have hope, no matter how bad things get. Keep that hope alive and love, love for others and love for yourself. Because when you love yourself, you take care of yourself, you spread that love. And listen, on 9-11, I thought we were going to save the world. As one individual, we will not save the world. But when we do a little bit of good each day and we continue to do that around the world, we make our world a better place. So if you're out there and you're suffering through something, understand that you can make it. And if you're a person who's healthy and, and, and are blessed, do something good for another person. You'll in, in have a positive impact and that hopefully will spread and make our world a better place. Thank you so much, uh, William, and I uh, wish you from now on uh, best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wishing you guys the very best as well. God bless.